Hello, everybody. It's a fantastic day for a webisode. I have Bryson Higgins, support engineer maestro for Milestone. Today, we're going to be talking about um, alarms on camera side motion detection in Milestone. Bryson will talk about how that relates to another one of our recent webisodes. Go ahead, Bryson. Yeah, thanks, Patrick. Yeah, so uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be setting up camera side motion detection. Um, if you've watched our previous uh, webisode on alarms on server side motion detection, this will tie a lot into that. And if you haven't seen that one, highly recommend checking that one out first and then coming back to this one uh, so you can kind of see the differences between the two. Uh, this one's going to involve a couple more steps uh, in it as well as some extra configuration, but it does give you some more options, which I will definitely highlight. Uh, highlight um, what should allow you to do. So first things first, we're going to jump right in here to, into our milestone Expertect management client, and we're going to find a camera that we want to set up motion alerts on. So for this one right here, uh, we're going to do this SLC support office, um, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually log into this camera's web page. So we're going to do some prerequisite stuff here first. So I already have it logged in right here in my Google Chrome browser. And when you get logged in, you're going to want to go into the setup of the device, and then you're going to want to go to the applications. Your interface may look different depending on your firmware, but uh, there you're, you're going to want to find the application section. Sometimes that's under system maintenance um, and other places on other ones. It's just in the application section of the um, web page. So once we're in here, we're going to want to find the motion detection uh application so there's there may be multiple versions of it on your camera but i like to always find the most recent version so this one has 4.23 on it right here so this is the one that we're going to be working off of right here so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start the application on the device itself and we're going to double click on it right there that'll open up the application so we can then go into the motion detection settings and if you hadn't started it before, it will prompt you at that time to start that motion detection at that time. So go ahead and close out of this right here. So right here, it's going to it's going to allow us to set up the motion detection on the camera. And this is going to be motion detection from the camera's uh, computer chip itself and detecting the motion uh, on the device and then sending that information into Milestone to trigger off of. So right here we have our options that we have to set up for our motion alerts. So we have this profile one right now and we can define the field. We can move these boxes around if we want to kind of narrow down where we want our motion to trigger from. If we wanted the entire image right here, we would just keep that box as large as we can right there to include everything. We can exclude areas as well if we wanted to come in here and define, I don't want to detect motion in this area. So if I wanted to block out this desk here or this desk here, I could go ahead and do that. So and I can add multiple exclusion areas. So I can add this one here and add another one right here if I wanted as well. So I don't want my motion to trigger every time these individuals move at their desk, right? So uh, for this demo though, I'm not going to use any excluded regions uh, or areas. I'm just going to set this up full blast right here. So what we want to set here is our uh, we can set our properties of our things. So we can name the profile if we want. By default, it comes in as profile one, and that comes into play when you uh, bring it back into Milestone. Um, so the next things that we're going to want to set up here is our filters. So this is where this really comes really handy right here. So you have short-lived objects, short objects, small objects, and swaying object detection on right here. So these are ignore filters that allow you to kind of define uh, the parameters of when motion will trigger. So a lot of the times on server side motion, it's just it's just detecting pixel changes. That pixel change can be a swaying tree, that can be a bug that flies by really fast, or it can be a small little uh, leaf that blows or something, anything like that that crosses there, that's going to be a pixel change that is going to be detected. So with these ignore filters here on the camera side motion, I can say if the object is only in the area that I am detecting for one second or less, ignore it. If the object is smaller than 5%, 
of the image, go ahead and ignore it as well. And you can see right here, this is where I can set that size and increase it and decrease it right here. So right now I'm saying 5% of the image. If it's smaller than that, go ahead and ignore it. And then I also have sway detection as well. So you want to, you can detect out sway of trees and objects that are continually moving back and forth of that are taking up about 5% of that image as well. It's going to ignore. This is really handy for exterior cameras, especially because you have, you know, weather environment uh, things out there that are going to be causing your camera to trigger off of motion and record where you may be okay recording some of that information you may not want to get notified when that information comes in uh, to your system so so you you'd really want to set up those you know ignore filters and things like that a lot of times i get tons of uh, requests and and uh, people asking how do I turn off my alerts or how do I configure my alerts when it's snowing out because snow sets off your motion detection because it's a lot of uh, pixel changes that occur on your system so using these ignore filters on camera side motion is a great way to do that because any short-lived object or small objects get ignored and only those larger ones will actually trigger the motion detection and set off that alert so want to make sure these things are set up first in your system and running on your camera before you do anything else. So go ahead and make sure you have this stuff set up and you're ready to go. So um, those are pretty much the big things to worry about there is setting, you know, your included area and then your exclusion areas if you want and making sure you have that first profile. Once you're good there and you have all those things set, you're done inside of the camera's web page and you can go ahead and actually close that out. So then back into the milestone X protect management client, we'll want to select our device that we're working on. And in order to bring those events in, we're going to want to go to the events tab. So right here, this is where we can pull in any events from the device itself. So if we click add right here, these are all of the driver events that the camera supports and we can bring in. So the one that we're looking for is going to be our motion started hardware, and that is indicating the hardware from the device is triggering the motion. So we're going to want to add that event. We have to do this one at a time and we're going to want to add our motion stopped event as well. So that will basically let us bring in the motion started and stopped events from this device right here. And you can see that this is the motion window one that we're defining right here. If we had multiple profiles set up, we would select those right here. Um, and it only brings in the number, not the name. So your name doesn't matter too much on the device, but the number that you're using for those uh, included areas does matter so just want to make sure motion area one set up and it's enabled set to true on both of these things right here and we've brought this into our events section so go ahead and make sure we save that inside our management client and the setup is pretty much the same as it was in that other guide over there so we'll run through that as well so we'll want to make sure that we have a time profile configured beforehand so if you want this to be for after hours or a daytime profile which basically sets up based off of your gps coordinates sets up your day length profile for you so you can you know uh automatically know when the sun is up and down in your area based off of your gps coordinates that comes in handy or if you have you know, certain hours that you want to define manually, you can set those up as well. In our last video, we went through setting up after hours as well as kind of showing how those daytime profiles are set up. So I'm not going to dive into those uh, during this video, but if you uh, would like to learn more about those and how to do that, um, I, sh I demonstrate that in that other video, alarms on server side motion detection in Milestone. So once we have our time profile set up and we have those events added into the system, we'll go down here to our alarm definitions. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add a new alarm and we'll go ahead and name this uh, whatever we want. So we'll do alarm on camera side motion and I'm going to do it on that SLC. So ooh, wow, caps locks is not playing nice with me support office so that's that camera there and again we can bring in more than one camera if we want 
but you will have to set up those motion, that motion settings on each one of those cameras individually in the web page, as well as adding those events individually to each camera um, by itself. So if you wanted to do multiple cameras um, on camera side motion detection, you would have to make sure you set up the motion detection on each one of those devices separately. There is no way to do that in bulk, unfortunately. So once we have our name defined here, we can go ahead and we can set instructions uh, if we wanted those to be broadcast to our users in our smart client, but on our triggering event, this is where it's different. Uh, so instead of doing a system event for server side motion, we're going to do device event. And we're going to go ahead and drop this down and here's all those device events that we had in the in the system that we can pull in. These are from any and all devices that are added to the system. So there may be a ton of these in here, but what we're looking for is motion started driver. So what this will be is this is when that motion started event occurs that we set up in there happens. That's when it's going to trigger this uh, alarm. So we'll go ahead and select our device again. So we'll go ahead and choose our source. Expand our server, dark camera, find SLC support office. And the first time you open this uh, sources section right here, it will take a, a bit to load. That is normal. But once it's loaded in, it should be a lot quicker from then on. Um, so depending on how large your system is, the first time you open this up, it may take a second. But once it's uh, been opened once, it should be fairly quick after that, as long as you keep your management client open. Um, your time profile, this is where we can define our time profile if we wanted here as well too. Oh, geez. Um, and we also have an option to uh, set a uh, event-based activation per period as well. So you can actually set in, so when this event activates and this event uh, um, deactivates or you, set, or you specify another event, that can be your start and your stop events as well. For the most part, people use time profiles. So for this right here, we're gonna just set it for always for now because uh, it's not after hours, um, nor does it during our loitering hours right now when I'm making this video. So then we can associate it to a map. So we have our map option here as well as our smart map. If GPS coordinates are loaded into the camera, you can use the smart map. And then for our map option, we can select our Maps, we have Stone, Security, HQ, Office Plan 1. That's where this map's associated. So we'll go ahead and select that. Operator action and timeout. Um, these are for you know times that you can specify for how long an operator has to react to the alarm right here. And this is more for reporting purposes. So if they take longer than a minute to respond, it'll then basically report that, that it took this long. It took over the minute uh, to, uh, to react to this or to acknowledge this alarm. Um, you don't really need to worry about this too much uh, if you're not gonna be running those reports or monitoring that stuff, but then you can also say, so after this time limit has been reached, an event triggers right here in the system. So you can say after five minutes or 15 minutes, if they haven't done anything with it, trigger this event, which then fires an email or does something in your system, right? To let somebody know, hey, that they're they're not reacting to this or you can have it fire you know a speaker or something like that whatever you want your imagination um, whatever comes to you comes to mind so our related cameras lets us associate this to any related cameras in the system and then our owner of the system we can actually define an owner of this or we can leave this blank as well to be able to assign it based off of the user that grabs the alarm as well so we can pre-assign it if we wanted to assign it to myself um, and then we can go ahead and set our alarm priority level as well. So in our past video, we had set up a motion alert uh, priority level, so we can use that right there. And that we had associated to a specific sound, which I'll demonstrate there. Um, and then we can also set up a category for these as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and set that for our motion alerts here. And then if you wanted any events to trigger, so when this alarm goes off, if you wanted any external events to trigger to fire an output or fire a user defined event in the system to send an email or anything like that, you could specify that action right here. Um, you will notice here that there is no auto close alarm on this right here because of the nature of the device event. We can only get in the, the started right here. We won't be able to auto close it based off of the stop action, but for motion events, that's totally fine. So we'll go ahead and save that. 
and uh, just demonstrating here our alarms data settings right here. So this is where we can see those priority levels. So you can see I have that set as my priority level two, the motion alert one set to Windows beep. So if I, uh, I have that set to repeat the sound as well. So when that alarm goes off, it's going to constantly play that sound over and over again. It's also going to enable a desktop notification to pop up in the smart client as long as the smart client is open and logged in. It doesn't have to be in the forefront of the screen, but as long as it's open and logged in, those desktop notifications will appear. We also have our states that the user can define, and then here are our categories as well. So we have our alarm list configuration right here that you can kind of specify different categories and levels. And then here's our reasons for closing the alarm as well. You can define those right here and specify for when a user closes those they can spec in what they want that to be. Our sound settings can be defined under the sound settings section right here that then we can assign to the priority level. So you can see here we have all of these windows uh, sounds right here as well as some added ones in as well. So uh, these windows ones will come on any and all windows servers. They're just included from the OS and these ones were added in by us after the fact. Adding in a sound is as simple as hitting add and specifying the wave file um, for that. They, it does only support WAV files for these. If you have any issues or not sure how to get a WAV file or, or convert an MP3 or anything like that to a WAV, you can always reach out to us here at support and we'd be happy to help you out with that. So that's setting up uh, motion alarms on camera side motion, kind of the differences between them. Um, what I'm gonna show now is just inside the smart client right here, how those alarms will show up and interact. So you can see right here, this is the motion driver started event right here. So this was triggered because the motion was triggered by the device itself and not the server side motion, which is the difference of these options here um, in the system. So you can see this is coming in right now into my alarm manager. You can see on my map right here, this camera is flashing, indicating that's the one that's an alarm. And I have the option to play back the video right here. So that is motion detection alerts on camera side motion. Excellent. Thank you, Bryson. Again, like Bryson said, if anyone has any questions, support at stonesecurity.net and we'll get you taken care of. Thank you, everybody.